Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com and there's a lot more pushback against microservices and we're in full swing back to a monolith. But I'll ask the question, if you can't build microservices, what makes you think you can build a monolith? And almost 10 years ago, Simon Brown was pretty much saying the same thing, just in reverse. In my opinion, 10 years later, it's the same reason why. So let's say we have two components, services, classes, whatever you want to think of these as, as A and B. A ends up calling B. If you're in a monolith, this is just an in-process, in-memory call. It's just a function call. If you're in microservices and doing this exact same type of thing where you need to call another service, typically what people are doing that is just over RPC. So instead of it being a function call in process in memory, now we're making requests over the network, typically using HTTP, gRPC, whatever the case may be. So we're doing the exact same thing. We're just now introducing a network call. It's just a network call, right? Well, not really. Before I get into the pain that brings, I'd like to thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. My suspicion is 10, 15 years ago when microservices were becoming more popular, people were thinking, ah, it's just a network call, not a big deal, right? Well, actually, it is a big deal. And a lot of people were shouting that it's a big deal. And that's actually the root cause of a lot of the pain points people have and why there's so much pushback about microservices is because of that network call. And to name a few of the pain points and why people are trying to push back to a monolith, it's because of latency, visibility, and coordination. In terms of latency, the network calls between services have overhead, they're not free. And if you're in one particular service, let's say A, you have no idea behind the scenes all the network call that have to be made to actually make your request. So if we have A calling B, that takes 100 milliseconds. B calls C, that takes 75. Then C to D takes 50. Then D to B takes another 75. Our entire round trip of this request from A, we're just think we're just calling B. And we think B took over basically 300 milliseconds, when in reality, it's part of the request was just 100 milliseconds, but everything else it had to do, and unbeknownst to it, other things down the stack, that's where you're gonna add up all this latency. And that's when everything's working great. What happens when some downstream service like service D all of a sudden has some performance issues and instead of returning in its usual 50 milliseconds, all of a sudden it's starting to return in 500 milliseconds. And that's when we get into visibility. If I'm from the viewpoint of service A and all of a sudden all my requests to service B are taking a long time, I'm complaining to them saying, hey, service B, get your stuff together. There's an issue here. It's not really them. It's further downstream. And service B doesn't even know that's the issue. And what if there's a failure for whatever reason? Where is it happening at? If you're in a monolith, you're in process, you have a stack trace. Same thing with goes with performance. If you're in a distributed environment and you're making RPC calls from service to service, you're gonna want some distributed tracing like open telemetry to capture what that distributed trace is and kind of the latency all in one shot, but it does add more complexity. And the other pain point I mentioned was coordination because I hear this all the time. We have all these microservices that need to be deployed together because one has a breaking change, one's a client that needs to implement that change, so they need to be coordinated so that they're deployed at the same time. So then the realization is, well, we have a distributed monolith and all those network calls, yeah, are the root cause of a lot of our pain. So instead of having a distributed monolith, let's just have a monolith. So a monolith must be better than microservices, right? Well, like I said at the beginning, if you can't build microservices, what makes you think you can build a monolith? What microservices expose to a lot of people is that network call and the pain that comes with that network call. But why do you have that network call? It's because you have a lot of coupling. So if you're in a microservices environment making a lot of RPC calls, you went from this, if you move to a monolith, into this. So there's no network calls, but you still have all this coupling. Moving to a monolith and being in process does solve some of those pain points of latency because we don't have that overhead to HP calls between downstream services. We have visibility because we get actual stack traces rather than the complexity of adding distributed tracing. And coordination, we don't have to coordinate with other services, we're in a monolith, we're in a single process. So whether you're in microservices or a monolith, when you have a high degree of coupling like this, that's what makes things complicated and complex and hard to understand what changes you're gonna make and how they'll affect things. You have a high degree of coupling, it's really hard to inherently understand when you make a change, how that might affect another part of your system. 
You hear this all the t time where I have a rat's nest of the system, where everything's coupled to everything, and you're in fear to make a change. This is why. And in my opinion, the main reason why there's a high degree of coupling, whether it's microservices or a monolith, it's the same reason. It's because of focusing on entities and data. I always use this old post from Reddit to exemplify this perfectly. I have a simple data model as below. I'm creating microservices for these tables. What's the best approach to create microservices? Do I need to create one microservice per table? My answer is no, don't create a service per table, but the same applies for a monolith. Don't create a module per table. And the reason is, as Alberto points out in this tweet, which I love, exploring a business domain focusing on data structures will hide differences and highlight misleading similarities ultimately nudging your design into unnecessary coupling. It's all about managing coupling. If you're in a monolith, managing that coupling so it's still easy to change and evolve your system. If you're in a microservice environment, you have all those pain points because of those network calls, because of coupling. It's all about managing that coupling. If I said you were in that microservices environment and you got that trade-off of having independent deployability, which is what you are after, and you don't have all those pain points because of those network calls, because you don't have them, because you've managed coupling, would your thoughts be different? So you may be asking, okay, well then what's the solution? How do I manage coupling? It's why is focusing on data and data structures such a cost to all this coupling? I'll give you an example. Let's say that in your company, you have an HR department that deals with payroll, and then you have some IT department that manages things like different accounts that you have, maybe for your email, et cetera. Where, what information do you have for your banking information for payroll? Where does that live? Likely in HR. It likely doesn't involve IT. If it did, HR would have to reach out to IT every time payroll need ran. However, in a lot of systems that are built, there's a singular pay place thinking about a singular idea of an entity of say an employee. And that lives oftentimes in one place. That's what causes all this coupling. You can have the concept of an employee live in one more than one place that the data of, for it revolves around what the business functions are for that thing. HR might have the data related to payroll, birth date, your social and security number, insurance number, et cetera. IT might have a completely different view of you related to the capabilities it provides. That means focusing on business capabilities, not data and data structures. Focus on the business capabilities, then the data behind that. So a business capability defines the organization's capacity to successfully perform a unique business activity. It means what, what does it provide? So whether you're creating a module or a service in microservices, it's not about what data it manages, it's about what business activity does it expose? What does it do? I have a lot of videos on my channel. I'll try to include some in the description so you can get some more details about kind of organizing around capabilities, how you can do that. If you've watched any of my videos and you have some recommendations, make sure to leave a comment so you can leave some comments that might have gave you a little bit of an aha moment about what I'm talking about. So of course, if you're gonna build a highly coupled rat's nest, yes, a monolith's gonna be better because you're not gonna have all those pain points of those network calls in a microservices environment. But regardless, it's all about how you're defining boundaries, how you're managing coupling, regardless of whether it's microservices or monolith. So I go back to it. If you can't build a microservices environment, where you're focused on capabilities, managing coupling, and if you watch any of my other videos, using asynchronous messaging, event-driven architecture to manage that coupling in that way to remove the temp temporal aspect, that's one way of doing it. But if you can't do that in microservices, you're not gonna build much better of a monolith. You're just removing the headaches of, like I said, kind of that visibility of stack traces, um, kind of having everything in code for refactoring. Yes, it's gonna be easier to manage, but it's still gonna be a mess. And my favorite part of this is reading your comments of your horror stories related to microservices and how that all turned out and why this shift is on. So get in the comments and let me know about your experiences. And of course, if you like topics like this and you wanna chat with other software developers, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. The link's in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to get in the comments and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.